It's May, folks, so we're here to talk about one thing and one thing only, Google I.O. Hi, I'm Dan Galpin here with The Developer Show, and this show is filled with everything you want to know about Google I.O. 2025. Hopefully you caught all the big announcements during the keynotes, but there is much more happening at Google I.O. Today, we will cover some of the other news you might have missed. To go deeper, make sure to check out all the sessions available on demand at io.google. Like many of your favorite cinematic universes, the Gemiverse is also rapidly expanding. Earlier this year, we were excited to report on the release of Gemma 3, our latest open model. The release gave Gemma an upgraded context window of 128 tokens, a 1 billion parameter model, and added image and video modalities, not to mention support for 140 languages. Building off of this momentum, over 70,000 Gemma open model variants were published in less than a year. Some of the variants created include Dolphin Gemma, Sign Gemma, and Shield Gemma 2. Incredible models that are using the power of Gemma to push their field forward and solve complicated problems in our everyday lives. The team also announced a new feature within AI Studio for Gemma models. In AI Studio, you now have the ability to select Deploy to Cloud Run, which allows you to create an endpoint URL on Google Cloud Run in just a matter of seconds. Of course, Android joined in all the I.O. fun as well. With Android's new release cadence, Instead of talking about the Android 16 beta, we're already close to the release of Android 16. And there's more to come, with the first ever minor API release of Android planned for later this year. Android announced some new privacy and security features, including the Android Advanced Protection Mode API and Theft Protection with Identity Check. Credential Manager adds the Digital Credentials API for ID verification, and users can restore their credentials during device onboarding with the new Restore Credentials API. Finally, the Privacy Sandbox is there to allow you to use third-party code in a dedicated SDK runtime process separate from your app. Android is also focused on helping you build apps that users love with the release of Material 3 Expressive, an expansion pack that brings more usability and emotional connection to your UI, while being fully compatible with Material 3 features. It's not a new version after all. Over in tooling, Jetpack Compose added support for autofill, auto-sizing text, balance animations, and more, alongside substantial performance improvements. And we've got library updates. The new Navigation 3 library is built on a flexible, customizable layered architecture that supports adaptive layouts out of the box. And it makes it easy to add animations between screens, implement predictive back, and create shared element transitions. By popular demand, we've added Compose support to Camera X and Media 3, and are continuing to advance support for business logic sharing in Kotlin multi-platform with KMP support, now in save state, view model, lifecycle, and paging. Androidify is a great example of an app using direct-to-cloud AI capabilities, allowing you to customize your own Android bot just by taking your picture. And there's lots more, including AI models that push what's possible on device, live updates and notifications, big changes in Wear OS, medical records in Health Connect, and the Glance 1.2 Alpha for widget creation. Your favorite web browser came in hot with some AI-powered updates. Chrome is now running Gemini on device and dev tools. That means no network latency, better privacy, and it even works offline. Say you're debugging a layout issue at 2 a.m. on dodgy Wi-Fi. You can now highlight your code and ask, why isn't this button aligned? Gemini will walk you through it right in the browser using your actual code context. You can highlight any DOM element and ask Gemini what it's doing, why it's broken, or how to fix it directly in the Elements panel. This is an absolute game changer. For anyone building smarter web apps or extensions, there's a new prompt API that makes it easy to bring Gemini into your product. You can plug it in to help your user rewrite content, summarize pages, or answer questions, all without building your own backend. It's like learning to speak another language with just a few lines of JavaScript. Another big one, the Summarizer API. It gives you clean, real-time summaries of whatever's on a page. Perfect for research tools, reader modes, or just helping your users get to the good stuff faster. 
And finally, it's happened. Native select dropdowns are now fully customizable. You can style them just like any other component, fonts, colors, hover states, all of it. No more hacks, no more custom rebuilds, just a clean, accessible UI. Let's talk Flutter because this release came stacked. First up, the new layout editor in DevTools means real-time UA updates in your editor. With live property editing, you can now tweak padding, alignment, and colors, and see those changes reflected immediately in your preview. Next, Impeller is officially everywhere. The new renderer is now available across all supported Android devices. That means smoother animations, fewer graphical bugs, and better frame pacing, all without having to toggle a thing, just a better UI out of the box. And finally, we improved code formatting in Dart. It's got cleaner defaults, more consistent styling, and better handling of trailing commas and line breaks. Your diffs will thank you. As you can see, we've had tons of exciting things happening here at I.O. And fun doesn't have to end. We're going to have sessions and keynotes on demand starting later this week. And make sure to tune in for a special edition of Google Developer News next week. Finally, I'm Dan Galpin for Google Developer News. And as always, the world runs on devs.